Hello scholars, welcome, Mr. Hinkle here. Today, what are we talking about? Science. What is science? Is it magic? Is it mystery? Is it a bunch of baloney? What is science? Well, science is everywhere. It's around us. It is a language, it's a communication, it's a process, it's a system. It is a lot of things. And that's what we are going to discuss. We're going to introduce Let's do it. Let's clearly define science, explain its nature as a systematic and evidence-based approach, and identify the purpose and the methods for utilizing science to understand the world around us. So, science, the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world following a systematic methodology based on evidence. Science is a lot of things. Science is cool. We got to make sure we say that, right? Science helps us to understand the world around us, natural phenomena. We develop testable explanations and predictions about the universe, and not the cosmos, but everything in the universe geology, chemistry, biology. The primary goal of science is to discover patterns, laws, and principles governing the physical and natural world, assuming that what we observe is repeatable and understandable through these patterns. It is a systematic method for acquiring, building, organizing knowledge that we can understand and communicate about this amazing world, universe that we live in. So the purpose of science is to seek out fundamental principles that explain patterns in nature, that explain how our world works. Now we do this through creating knowledge, creating knowledge and evaluating knowledge that's already been created without bias. Now this is the hard part because inherently human beings are biased. We see the world through our own eyes. When science is completed, we seek to, as scientists, use objective evidence that is free from bias to reach logical conclusions. Not easy to do. It's really easy to put personal influence into your science, but the objective of science is to be objective and free from bias. I also think science is a language. Science is a way that we speak about the natural world. There are many languages to understand and science is one language. It is not, this is my personal opinion, it is not the only language, it is not the only lens, it is not science or die, science or nothing else in the world. No, science complements all of the other ways that we can look at the world through the lens of spirituality, through the lens of belief, through the multiple lenses. Science can help to contribute to an overall knowledge in its very specific lane. So let's keep science where it's at in its lane and understand it is a language of communication that seeks to understand the world through objective, unbiased evidence to reach logical conclusions. Scientific inquiry is being so curious. Why does it work like that? Why do waterfalls drop water? Why do rivers meander? Why are there different types of rocks? So uh, scientific inquiry is being curious about the world and we use the scientific method to problem solve observable, observable phenomenon with these assumptions that natural phenomenon govern, are governed by physical processes, that what we see happening today is the same processes that were happening in the past and that we can discover these processes and make predictions of the future. So the basic assumptions of science are here. Humans are biased. I already mentioned that, but it's true, we are. It's my way or the highway. How can you say that or think that? It's got to be this way because that's what I think. Um, that's a little bit exaggerated, but we have our own lens, right? And so there's objective and subjective my personal feelings and my personal beliefs on how things are subjective without bias is 
objective, right? So the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone here in Yellowstone National Park. Subjective is this is a beautiful landscape because I think it's a beautiful landscape. Objective is the image shows a waterfall. There's no feeling in saying it is a waterfall. That is a technical description to water in free fall broken up in part of a river. So this is what science is trying to do is reach these objective observations. I'm not saying, oh, it's so pretty because I like it. I like the outdoors, it's true. And I do think that this is a beautiful image of a waterfall. Now, science can also do quantitative and qualitative. Think quantity. 500 versus red or blue. I have a gray shirt on, qualitative. One, two, three, four, five, six. My shirt has six buttons, quantitative. So quantities are numbers, qualities are, uh, qu uh, qu quantitative are numbers, qualitative are qualities, right? Examples that we can use numbers, length, mass, temperature, time. These things help to create objective observations when we can actually measure and record the numbers or the quantities of the phenomenon that we are observing. So this is important. I'll discuss this in Science Denial, where we talk about what science deniers try and do to debunk science. But I just want you to know that science is real. It is a real phenomenon. And the conclusions that science is reaching are not fake or made up. Because the core tenet of science is that every statement spoken or said by science has to be falsifiable. Any conclusion science has ever made at any point can be proven wrong. Now, it is the objective, it is the goal of science to try and prove statements wrong. When we develop hypotheses, we say that. This is how I think the natural world works. And then we create experiments to try and prove those statements wrong. And if we cannot prove those statements wrong, then they are supported. Evidence supports statements, but never proves them. Science is meticulous. It's not easy to do. It's rigorous. It's skeptical. People develop entire careers to prove other scientists wrong. So scientists have to go undergo rigorous investigation and testing of their ideas before even offering them out into the community. Now, science is different than pseudoscience, which may have a bad connotation, but let's, eh, let's remove good or bad. So falsifiability is the difference between science and pseudoscience. The great example here is astronomy versus astrology. So astronomy is looking at measuring the light from stars and using that to interpret how the universe works. Astrology is looking at the position of the stars and the planets and giving interpretations into the effects that they may have on humans. I'm into it. I like astronomy. Uh, astrology too. I'm into astrology. Uh, sometimes when things are going haywire and there's a breakdown of communication, let's see where Mercury is at. It's in retrograde. Yes, okay, that explains everything. Um, but I know that one is science and one is not science. And so we do not want to confuse what is actually science with what is not science. Um, and the difference is falsifiability. Every statement in science must be falsifiable and can be proven wrong. Science is a collaborative, multidisciplinary approach to problem solving. So scientists communicate, scientists look to other disciplines, scientists share ideas, they review each other's work, and they undergo the peer review process before scientific explanations can be published inside of any kind of a journal. Lots of independent researchers have to uh, support an idea before it becomes 
accepted within the scientific community and elevated to the level of a scientific theory. An idea or a guess is a hypothesis about how something works. And then once that idea has undergone rigorous testing through multiple independent researchers, it may become widely supported with the evidence that it can't be proven wrong, although it can be at any point. And then that hypothesis is elevated to a scientific theory. Science is ongoing. It's a dynamic self-correcting process where the more we learn, the more we refine, the more our ideas become substantiated. But at any point, a new test, a new discovery, a new finding can uh, refine or replace. Science helps us with technology leading to advancements that further excel our society into the future. I mean, look where we are. It's amazing with uh, the use of computer technology, artificial intelligence. We're trying to get people back on the moon. Oh, I hope it happens 2025, 2026. Let's see if that is going to happen. Um, I've got my fingers crossed. I cannot wait. So this is a pretty big introduction to science, right? Science creates and builds knowledge. The knowledge is such that how does the universe work? We're trying to understand and explain the processes that are acting for observable phenomenon in our universe. We use observations and evidence that are tested and communicated within the scientific community. And science continues. Right now it's guided usually by funding and the practical applications of what the science can help for us. But Science is a process that never ends, that is here to help us understand our universe and ourselves. Thank you so much.